uh, you've been coaching uh, Czech Republic team for the last seven years, but uh, you haven't coached any club. As far as I know, uh, a lot of coaches suffer because of this. Do you suffer? Uh, uh, you know, when I decided, when I took the, I take the, I make the contract with the national team. So uh, first obligation that they want for me is uh, not to coaching, not to coaching a team. And uh, in uh, those time, three, four years ago, I agreed about this. Uh, after that, after two years, I felt that I I want to coach a team. So I asked them uh, that I want to change my contract. They agreed. And uh, I did it uh, two years. And uh, then they asked me again to do, to do only national team. Uh, so again, I agreed, but uh, le let's be uh, frankly, and, uh, they say that uh, yes, in the last uh, two years, I really want, uh, I, I felt that I want to coach a team again, because uh, it's a little bit uh, uh, boring and uh, I would like to do a team also. And uh, from my great luck in the last uh, summer, uh, we agreed that I can do both together. So, so I'm uh, happy about this. Uh, yes, uh, uh, you know, sometimes in your career it's good to make only national team, but I think that uh, it's not for a long time. So I'm now happy that I can do also a team. Yeah, it's because uh, the the club job is 24/7 and the national team job is not 24/7, or there are some other reasons that you you want to coach a club. Yeah. First of all, yes, you know, uh, I, I prefer to work uh, 24-7. I think that to coach only national team, sometimes it's make you a little bit uh, rusty and you need time to, to, to come back to your shape. Uh, it's like basketball player. So because of this, yeah. when I coaching the national team, I all the time uh, make a lot of preparation games. People think it's for me, for the players, but it's for me first of all. Uh, uh, so this is the the, the the minus if you are not coaching a club. In the other end, uh, when you coach a national team, you have time to visit your players, to be with more contact with them. Uh, so it's it's you know all both sides are plus and minus, but uh, for sure to coach only national team, it's uh, I don't think it's good for a long time. Um, I wanted to, to to talk to you about the example of uh, Igor Kokoshkov, uh, who coached uh, Fenerbahce, and day after he went to Bubble to coach Serbian national team. What do you think about this experience? Uh, for sure, uh, you know, to prepare a team uh, for in three days uh, for national team, uh, it's not so too easy. And uh, Igor uh, Kokoshkov, uh, you know, is new in in the Serbian team and. Uh, uh, to come from, uh, I think I think he came straight to the bubble, so I don't yeah. I don't know if he knows the names of the the players. Uh, okay, but in the other end, the Serbia know that they will advance, so it's no big problem. But uh, it's not easy for me to coach a, a national team. It's different than to coach a, to coach a club to coach a national team. Uh, it's different approach. Uh, for example, I, for sure, in, on basketball wise, in the prof professional side, you need to concentrate concentrate only on three, four important things on offense, three, four important things on defense, and concentrate on this. Uh, in, in, in the team, you have time to to check yourself. A lot of games, a lot of friendly games, so you can uh, check. Also, mentality. You know, in in a national team. You don't have time to to argue with players, to fight with players, to have crisis because uh, you don't have time to 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 solve it. So if you have something, uh, that, that, that some situation, not good situation, personality with a player, uh, you need to solve it uh, quick and fast. Otherwise, yeah. it will uh, it will kill you. Uh, in, in a club, you have the time. You have the time to speak with him, to 
to let him play, to not let him play. You know, you have uh, all the options that you, you. So it's different approach to to coach a team and to coach a national team. Yeah, talking about these uh, Eurobasket qualifiers, what do you think about the fact that uh, some players uh, they can uh, come to bubble later? Uh, and some coaches can can come to bubble later uh, because uh, uh, I I read uh, Andre Balvin uh, criticizing uh, this uh, th- this uh, decision by FIBA, by Euroleague, by federations, by whoever made it. Uh, yes, you know I don't want to talk about it too much, but for sure it's uh, you know even for us that it's not so important this bubble uh, and we're checking. Uh, new players, we play with the, even not the second team, the third team. Uh, we had the, the opportunity to bring to three days uh, some of our main players, not all of them, of course, not Vesely or Satoransky or that, but some of them. And uh, we didn't do it because uh, they told us we, that we can. And suddenly we see that players come from uh, for Poland national team and uh, Serbia and this, they come one, two days before. It looks to me weird. Uh, you know, uh, If it was uh, more important for us, for sure, we we ask for uh, for answers from this. But uh, yes, it's weird, you know. I, I can't say <laughs> if the rule, the rule, uh, with they make rule, the rule needs supposed to be to to everybody. But again, I'm not crying about this. It's, uh, it just let us know that maybe in the next bubble we can do something different. Yeah, yeah, probably. Um, and uh, I think it's um, it's not fair not only to national teams but to Euroleague teams too because um, as we heard, Ergin Ataman, the coach of or, or the coach of Anadol FS, also criticized the uh, this uh, conflict between FIBA and Euroleague, and he said that uh, basketball is not played only in Euroleague. So uh, I guess it, it hurts both sides. If you ask me, I think that uh, this situation is not good that that Euroleague players not can't. Participate in the in the in these games of the national team. I think they need to solve this situation. Yeah. I think it's not good. First of all, for the basketball, uh, and second, you know, I have Jan Vesely that uh, every time he told me, coach, if I can come, I want to come, but uh, but they not allowed him. So I think this situation must be. Must must be solved because, uh, like I said, basketball it's not only Euroleague. Throughout your career, uh, and there were not a lot of um, big stars like Jan Vesely, for example. But when there were big stars, uh, you uh, you were really um, friendly with them. I mean, uh, for example, Jan Vesely uh, said uh, uh, said about you like this guy. Uh, This guy is crazy, but he knows w- what he is doing. Uh, and we know that Jan Vesely is a very tough man. Uh, there are not a lot of coaches that he talks about uh, like this. Um, how do you um, how do you work with uh, star players? I tell you, I discovered that to work with uh, quality and star players is uh, easier than to work with uh, average players. So uh, it's it's also. In, in, in my team in Nimbo when I have really good players but uh, so it's more easier for me to work with them but uh, you know I'm in one way if you're talking about national team it's, if it's uh, if it's Vesely if it's Aturansky uh, in one way I'm uh, I think that today the days that the, the coach is a uh, dictator and this uh, on players it's 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 not these days anymore you know if uh, because today the, the people are changed the young players are changed it's not the same environment that was uh, five ten fifteen years ago so in one way I'm, I'm uh, in good relationship relationship with them and respect them but in the other ways I will never uh, uh, give up on my uh, uh, important things for me off off the floor and uh, on the floor. Uh, so everything is uh, calculated uh, and I think that uh, <clears throat> again, like you said, Jan is not easy guy. You know, you, yeah. you need to know how to approach him. Every player needs different approach. Uh, and, and like Jan said, we had some uh, Uh, debate and uh, 
Sometimes you ask advices from the players. It's what Tomer Sotaransky said. Uh, okay. Okay. I tell you, I, I think that uh, with all the respect for us, to coaches, uh, sometimes you need to listen to your players. It's not... Uh, I was a player and uh, sometimes I think the slow things that maybe the coach don't see. And, uh, and sometimes players feel comfortable with... Uh, In, 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 set, in one set and uh, not comfortable in the in other set. And you know, I, I read, uh, I was in a clinic with uh, one, a few years ago uh, with Zaliko Bradovic and uh, he also said, uh, listen, to the play, some, listen to your players because sometimes they know even better than, uh, than you. So it's not say that, okay, what this player said I'm doing, you know, but, but when I, I mean... Uh, moments that injection situation that I want to to another opinion or something that the, the players feel free to come and speak with me uh, in the end we all have the same uh, target you know to win the game so yeah. for winning for winning games I can do everything you know I'm <laughs> I'm uh, and really everything a few more questions about NBA uh Two years ago, you went to, to Washington uh, to watch Tomer Sadaransky and the conditions uh, he is in. Um, what do you think about the, the conditions uh, in the NBA for the players? I'm not a fan of NBA. Uh, I'm talking professionally, so I think, uh, I think that, first of all, it's a different bad, uh, game from, America, from Europe. Uh, in, uh, uh, In the NBA, it's a show, most of the games. Uh, I don't like that, that uh, you know, that uh, I think that, that, that the players control everything. The players, the, players, the players control the games, the players control the media, the players control the management, the players control even the teams, because if they want now, they go to play another team. You know, I say, said, I want to go, I want to play with this. And so, uh, and... You know, of course, they have some some great uh, coaches and some great teams that play play really team basketball. But in the other end, you see some teams that you see a lot of uh, it's like it's a circus, you know, and on practices and on games. Uh, so I'm not fan of this. A fan of this when I I want to new to take something new when I. Uh, So I see something new sometimes in the NBA. Not everything fit to Europe, uh, and I, you know it's also the the American players that came from college. They don't have a lot of them don't have fundamentals like, and they don't know they don't know how to think on the floor. They have, of course, the they have the Apology. physicality, the athleticism, but but. Uh, They don't. They are not thinking basketball, uh, right? Basketball like in Europe. Also, you know, they, in America, they let the players. Uh, they let the players. Uh, they don't touch the players. I I prefer the NBA from the 80s, 90s. 
those times was really aggressive basketball today it's a show um, so my visits over there uh, show me what I tell you right now um, so of course the money is there <laughs> we can't ignore this the money over there but uh, I'm not a fan of uh, this around the basketball they are amazing after your trip to the USA, you said that uh, the head coach can have like up to nine uh, assistant coaches. Uh, would you like to have nine assistant coaches in Europe? I asked uh, Chris, Chris Brooks, the coach of uh, the coach of uh, uh, Washington. How you prepare the practice with that to give job to nine coaches? Only this take you ten hours. You know it's. Uh, it looks to me crazy. Uh, you know, as a coach, you need good uh, two assistant coaches, uh, good chemistry between you, and I, as a coach, also give my assistant uh, uh, freedom to work. And I, I, uh, it's uh, important to to trust your assistant coaches, professional side. So again, I'm not. Uh, Fans of nine assistant coaches. Yeah, uh, I, I have just one question. It's about uh, obtaining a Czech passport. First of all, congratulations on, on this uh, for being recognized. Um, and uh, what are your feelings about um, get, getting the passport of uh, some other country? Uh, no, what does this mean? I, I get the I get the passport not because I uh, know the language, because I don't know the language, and, and this is the first priority to get passport here. And not because I married uh, a Czech woman, unfortunately, no. But uh, I get it because I, I bring something uh, uh, honorable to the country, something uh, knowledge, and because I also work with with the young coaches here, and, and I bring uh, uh, respect and. Uh, and uh, honorable in all over the Europe. So I get it from this. Not a lot of people in Czech Republic uh, get passport, I believe, like in Russia. Uh, and we can't, uh, like other uh, teams in Europe, give passport easy for players. Uh, so for me, it's, it showed that the, the government, uh, the Minister of the Sport Education and the government uh, uh, recommend for this, and they show that show me that people respect uh, respect it, uh, respect me, and uh, appreciate what uh, I contribute to the country. Uh, you know, uh, people told me because I'm not reading uh, media, but people told me that this is the first time that was good. Uh, Reacting of people about uh, someone who get Czech passport, uh, even is not uh, Czech. So I'm happy about this. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Congratulations once again. Thank you very much for the interview. Thank you very much. Thank you.